international readers. Uh, welcome to our live stream this afternoon. Uh, I'm Laura Webster. I'm the editor of The National and I'm joined today by Abby Garton Crosby, who is one of our political reporters. So we decided to jump on and have a little bit of a sort of post-match analysis after Hamza Youssef unveiled the new white paper on independence earlier today. Now it was his first one. I think our last one was from Nicola Sturgeon when, Abby, last year sometime? Yeah, I was definitely before I think the end of the year last year or something like that feels like a year ago at this point <laughs> but yeah it was a, it was a while ago since we've had a wee independence paper so yes and how many did we have before from from Nicholas I remember there being two or three there was three yeah, yeah. there was three so this is number four uh for readers can see here and it's all about the constitution so this is the fourth document of these I've managed to to bag in a hard copy um because we've been at all the press conferences so it's very interesting obviously the first one was kind of just setting out the countries that um, Scotland would compare itself to, so sort of smaller nations. Then we got a bit more into sort of other parts of like democracy and renewing democracy. But this is very specific about a written constitution, how that would work post-independence, how it would be kind of debated and the details of it. And it's very interesting. There's a lot of stuff in here. So I'm sure we're going to have quite a lot to talk about on the stream today once I start getting into it. Laura, yeah, I mean, it sounds like it. The idea of a written constitution is something that our readership has been really interested interested in for quite a long time you know since we launched the Sunday National in 2019 four whole years ago and um, we had a contribution from John Drummond and Elliot Bulmer every week and they are experts in the constitution so Elliot Bulmer has been involved in drafting constitutions all around the world in lots of different and uh, newly independent states or states that are just changing how they're doing things so it's always something that's really engaged our readership and i think mm -hmm. most people watching this probably would agree that it's time for uh, a proper conversation around how to have a written constitution so why did hamza yusuf today say that it was so important to to bring something like that in when we secure independence yeah, well, obviously, one of the main things he was talking about is how Westminster doesn't have a written constitution. It basically relies on parliamentary sovereignty, and that does have a risk to devolution because they could just remove devolution at the stroke of a pen. So mm -hmm. it basically, you know, enshrines various rights. So it's obviously not just about that, but it's got things like the right to access to the NHS free at the point of need. So that would secure the NHS and the constitution. We know our readers who will know that there have been many attacks on the NHS, plenty of attempts to privatise it. That would secure the NHS is free at the point of need. The right to strike, which is very different to Westminster, as we've seen, because they have been shutting down the right to strike and bringing in things like the public order bill. This would allow workers to strike and basically supports them in doing that, which is very interesting and very um, quite cool, I think. Um, and then also one of the key things that I think our readers would be very interested in is that it would also remove nuclear weapons from the Clyde. So I think that that is a big one because we know that a lot of people in Scotland are not happy about having nuclear weapons at Faz Lane. Um, the peace camp has been there for a long time. It would, be, it would be a hard negotiation, I imagine, but this is in there. This is one of the first kind of crucial things that we've seen that they really want to see get that out there. So I think that's very interesting. And we'll get onto the monarchy stuff and head of state in a minute, but that was quite interesting too. But yeah, so those are the kind of crucial things. It's obviously setting out the difference between the direct, direction of travel that Westminster's going in versus the direction of travel that an independent Scotland would go in. And he kind of went into that a little bit in his opening speech and kind of talking about how it's quite radical and that he really wants to enshrine these rights. But it would go to, I'll get into the detail of how it would work, but a lot of it would be decided by uh, an a, con a constitutional convention. So it would be the people that write the constitution for the people. And this is just kind of suggestions of like talking points to kind of kick off from and maybe topics that the, the Scottish government kind of think should be in there. But when we're speaking to Hamza Yusuf after, at the kind of sit down press huddle where it was off camera but on the record after the live stream that everybody probably watched if they're not working like us um so that when we were talking about that was getting more into the detail of you know the how this is all going to work and you know that he was obviously saying that he has suggestions but the, con the convention might go off in a different direction and bring other things because i asked because the nhs is going to be included in there is the right to abortion and women to access health services like that going to be in there and he was saying it's kind of that one they're obviously working on whether or not they're going to decriminalize it which would be primary legislation and things like that so it's very interesting because a lot of it is about enshrining human rights and making sure that people's rights are protected in scotland which we've seen a lot of erosion of at westminster yeah that is really interesting it sounds like it's quite jam-packed with information whereas in the previous uh booklets that were put out the biggest kind of criticism of them was that it was a bit vague and 
that sounds like he's wanting to do really specific things. So do you think that, I mean, obviously it's only really like an hour since it came out and realistically people who aren't journalists probably have not read this whole document yet, but have you noticed any kind of difference in the reaction, the immediate kind of feeling that you're getting from both the independence movement, the opposition even, how are people talking about it? Yeah, I mean, obviously within the room, because I came straight from the press conference, a lot of the talk was obviously about the SNP finance probe that's going on. So a lot of people were obviously kind of trying to distract from that. But this is obviously, you know, people were still asking questions about the detail of it, which is, you know, in the, in the last couple of press conferences with Nicola Sturgeon became a bit of a rammy, shall we say, because um, everybody was kind of shouting questions over each other, but it was taken very differently today. We got to sit down, everybody got questioned, it was much more relaxed. So yeah, but obviously I think the we've seen a lot of reaction from the the CND, who are very happy about the, the nuclear um, weapons being removed from the Clyde. The Greens are absolutely delighted about the NHS being sh enshrined into right and stuff like that. Haven't seen much um, opposition from the Conservatives, but with things like this, they tend to just not comment on them. And they just don't want to get involved in the conversation, which will come and backfire on them eventually when it gets to the referendum. But that is just how they how they approach it. And we haven't heard from Labour, but Keir Starmer is in Edinburgh, I believe, had an issue with his bus. At some point. <laughs> from yeah. what I gathered from walking up the road leading your messages that there was an issue with the bus. <laughs> I was in the newsroom and some of the journalists were talking about this so what happened was it's a green energy announcement in Edinburgh and uh, the journalists were supposed to be picked up on a hydrogen bus. My understanding is I don't know if something went wrong with the hydrogen bus or it broke down. Anyway the journalists actually got picked up in a diesel bus and then the diesel bus got lost and from what I've heard is that one of the journalists from the Daily Mail had to give the Labour Party instructions on how to get to its own event. I can't, I can't. This, this is like the time they kidnapped me on an electric bus. <laughs> the buses did all go well. I ended up in the Middle East End somewhere on an electric bus one day um, with, the, with Anna Sarwar, it was very interesting. They, so, yeah, they seem to have an ongoing problem with, with buses. Uh, they really need to, to and their energy policy, by the looks of it, because they can't seem to decide whether or not they want to go green or not. Um, but we have all yeah. that on the website, obviously, readers. We'll go back to the Constitution. Got a little bit. Exactly, yeah. Yourself. I was just going to say, um, James uh, Walker, who is one of your FAB reporting colleagues, has been covering Labour's announcement, which um, at one point there was only seven people watching it on the Scottish oh. Labour Twitter but. Anyway, if you want to read all about that, you can go to the website. So I was just going to read out a couple of comments, Abby. Um, Gordon McKenzie said that there's a Dr. Mark McNaught who wrote a provisional Scottish constitution a few years ago. It was open to discussion and amendments, and he's a world-renowned expert from the University of Rennes. I, apologies if that's the wrong pronunciation. Um, it would be great to see people like that brought into a constitutional convention. That's basically what Hamza's saying, right, is that they will get those kinds of experts in. Yep. For that. I also said it would be very grassroots and from the bottom up, so I don't think it would be like the Scottish government kind of dictating what the rules would be. It seems like this is going to be a very open conversation when we get to that point and um, but obviously there there is talk of an interim constitution so basically what would happen is um in the situation where scotland votes for independence so the first day that we're an independent country this interim constitution would come in which would cover us sort of for the period that the constitutional convention would be up and running now i asked the first minister about how long do we think that would be he said around three to five years but obviously don't know how long because the convention might decide to go into detail on some things and he hasn't even mentioned in here you know and yeah. it can go off a little bit so that's why the interim con constitution would come in in that meantime to protect people's rights during that period you know we're setting up the state and it's sort of like a you know, a message just kind of describing the kind of state, state that an independent Scotland would be. So it's kind of setting the foundations for that, which would be built on by the convention. So yeah, that would have a lot of input from, you know, hopefully experts and things like that who've written these things. Because I feel like I've talk, talked to Andrew Tekel about this before, and he was saying that you can't encode everything in a constitution because it gets really messy now. <laughs> so obviously you have to kind of be America. In America, like their constitution, that's a problem. That's not a good example. Of exactly. Yeah, I think that was where he was going with that. So obviously you have to kind of think of what you're going to put in, what it applies to. You don't want it to be too wide ranging and too specific at the same time. You want to make sure like everything's covered and that those things are really important in there. So, yeah, I think it's it's very interesting as well because he said it'd be a living document. So, you know, it could change over time once it's in place. If there's something that's not quite working, we could change it or we could improve it or we could add things in that become like a big issue because if you think about something like buffer zones that was never an issue about five ten years ago and now it's become mm -hmm. a huge issue there are things that are going to come up over time that we could possibly not predict 
it that would probably need to be in a constitution. So I think that's a good way to approach it, to have it like a living document that can keep, can be constantly updated, you know. Maybe yeah. like amendments like the Americans, but not as not as lengthy, and not as many, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> No, that will avoid that. Thanks. And um, there's another commenter who says that um, the press questions from today's event were not covered by Sky. So I don't know if there was anything important that you think you should flag up from that section. Um, what did we miss? What did the viewers of Sky not get the chance to see? Uh, not much, to be honest. I mean, there was a, a lot of the conversation was, um, you know, about. Let me let me just have a quick check. There was a lot of talk about. Um, Westminster, obviously, um, and the kind of impact on that. There were a lot of questions about Nicola Sturgeon, as to be expected. As I kind of said earlier on, a lot of people were not really asking questions about what, what we were there to talk about. But, you know, it did kind of get into that. There was a lot about the human rights and stuff. Let me just, I'm just having a quick flick through my notepad for all of them. But yeah, it was really interesting. Yeah, there was one question about whether or not he was protecting Nicola Sturgeon during it. So this is what I mean about the Sky viewers. You didn't really miss much. It was pretty similar at the, at the we had a, a sit down huddle with the First Minister after. So that was off camera. So all the print journalists went in um, to our room and we had to give us coffee and pastries, which we didn't get under Nicola Sturgeon. Let me, let me tell you that. We're very <laughs> excited. Um, so yeah, and then we kind of had like a really long, it was like 35 minutes we were in there sitting down and everybody got at least two questions around the room and so people would ask like one question about either Nicola Sturgeon or the SNP finance probe and then kind of jump in with a question about the constitution after. That was kind of what we were dealing with. Um, but yeah, it was very interesting. The, the broadcasters kind of pushed on their usual stuff of the SNP finance probe. And, you know, this is all hypothetical because you don't actually have independence. But obviously the first minister said, best case scenario for us is a section 30 order, but that route has been blocked. So, you know, we're stuck there. There was a lot of pushing about whether or not he favours a de facto referendum, obviously because we have the convention coming up on Saturday and everybody wants to get a little line ahead of that um, just to see, but he was keeping tight lipped and saying that that will come out at the convention. We will ho hopefully have some more on that before the convention for you guys that we're working on. And I was pestering about that while I was there today. Um, so yeah, that, that's kind of what we were looking at, at at the press conference, but I think it was only about five questions before it kind of shut and then we went into to the huddle in the room, so. Okay. So do we have any indication of how many more papers we're going to get or when they're going to come? I've been FOIing and pestering about this from the first paper <laughs> that we've had. So like they, they don't have like a sort of kind of set timeline. I think they're just doing them as they decide to do which one comes next. We don't even have a full list of what the topics are, although I did manage to pester out of them that there potentially is going to be one on energy. Um, because that wasn't mentioned quite early on. I think Nicola Sturgeon didn't mention that in the kind of list of stuff that she was kind of rattling off and I'd kind of pestered about that. But we think we're going to get one on energy um, and things like that. So yeah, it's just a wait and see game. But we weren't, I, I was quite excited that we got one before summer because as you said, it's been a while since the last one that we've had. So it's really good to get a bit more insight about what the Scottish government are working on. Because obviously um, Jamie Hepburn, the Minister for Independence was there today as well. Um, Although the first minister was basically leading all the questions, but so was Shona Robinson, the deputy first minister. Um, she was there too, answering questions and things like that. So we got forty minutes in a room with them, and um, kind of going into the details of stuff like that. Which compared to the previous kind of press conference, which I said with a bit of a rammy, we were having to kind of shout and hope that you get your question called. We got a lot more detail of that, which we'll obviously have up for our readers when I eventually sit down and write it. Somewhere. Yes, sorry. I know it's just for everyone's uh, context. Uh, as soon as Abby came back in from that press conference, I was basically like, okay, we're going on live stream right now, so it doesn't yeah, matter. Reading that shorthand notes. Um, <laughs> yeah, sense, um, yeah, so I stole you away from that. Anyway, okay. the gossip I've heard is that one of the next uh, papers is going to be on Europe and returning to Europe. So Yes, of course. Yeah, there'll be happening. one on Europe, probably. I imagine that would hopefully look at the impact of Brexit on Scotland as well. Um, and kind of set that out for people because I do feel like that isn't you know we cover it a lot we cover it a lot at the national we cover it a lot about the impact of Brexit but not everybody does and I don't think that the true extent of what damage Brexit's done to Scotland has really kind of came to the to the fore yet so I think that would be a really interesting paper to see from the Scottish government's perspective what the impact of Brexit has been and then what the impact would be going back into the European Union on Scotland so yeah that is a really good one to look out for and will be kind of one of the the key ones coming out because obviously a lot of people in Scotland the majority of people in Scotland wanted to remain in the European Union but we were dragged out. Yeah I agree it just it takes a lot of research and so we put our <laughs> like thinking caps on and thought about different ways to present 
the data on Brexit's impact um, in really interesting and engaging ways through maps and sort of interesting graphics because when you get the numbers read out to you it doesn't necessarily always mean very much but you know with a big team of civil servants like the Scottish government has it shouldn't be that hard to, to pull that sort of stuff together yeah. so you've got more resources than us so let's hope they come through with that <laughs> let's see what's going on and um, there's another comment saying uh, someone is looking forward to attending the convention on Scottish independence on Saturday. Me and Abby, I'm just checking before I say that we're both going to be there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I need to book my train, um, which I should really do today. Um, but yes, I, I'm, I'm on the way up for that. That's going to be very exciting. I think Xander's joining us. Is that right? That yeah, and Sandra Elliott and Judith Duffy, who is our chief political commentator for the Sunday. Of course, uh, she's actually on shift on Saturday. I forgot about that. Okay, that makes sense. That's exciting. I Majority know, yeah. women, as always, people. We always have more women than men. It was astonishingly male dominated today, by the way. There were 15 oh. men at that, 15 men around that table and four women. Not surprising. Not for surprising. Who was wondering? Because <laughs> I keep count of it. Uh, uh, that's very interesting. It's a very male-dominated political lobby for those who are not aware. Well, I'm sure we'll do another live stream this week just to kind of give people a bit of an overview of what we're looking uh, towards at the Independence Convention. At the moment, we don't have a ton of detail. We know that there's going to be that panel event with Kate Forbes, Leslie Riddick, Gordon McIntyre, Kemp, and Paul oh. Kavna, aka yeah. the Wee Ginger Dog, and they're going to be talking about why not Scotland? So why are all of these other countries able to be independent states but not Scotland? I think it'll be a really interesting way to kind of open the conversation. But beyond that, I, I don't have a whole lot of detail. <laughs> <laughs> I know, neither do I. We've been trying, but as I said, they were very tight-lipped um, during the press conference when we were trying to get like lots of information about it. But hopefully, as we said, we will have some more exclusive content and setting out a little bit of detail that later in the week, um, which we are working on, obviously, bringing you that. And we'll be there, which is very exciting, because I didn't get to go to the party conference because I was at Supreme Court last year. So this is like my first sort of SNP conference. It's not even a real one. I'm very excited about it. <laughs> I can't wait. It's going to be good. Plus, it's only one day. The last one I did was three days. It's pretty Yeah, exhausting. that's much. It's also my wedding anniversary weekend, so it means at least I can get back for dinner on the Saturday, which is quite good. That's good. I think the SMP always seem to organise these things whenever you have major life events. Uh, Genuinely, yeah. I'm surprised there wasn't something my wedding weekend a couple of years ago, but it was all good. <laughs> <laughs> right, fabulous. Let's wrap that up there, because, Abby, you need to go and write a whole bunch of stories about it's this. It's very the warm in this attic as well, so that <laughs> Right. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Sorry about my computer glitch there. I didn't mean to freeze, um, but the Wi-Fi in the building is questionable at times. Um, make sure that you are having a look on the national.scot for all of our stories and our live blog about today's independence paper. We've got lots more coming. We've got reaction and analysis from Abby, and I'm sure there'll be even more. Oh, we've got a um, copy coming from the constitutional expert, John Drummond, as well. So lots to look forward to today. So as ever, thank you so much for joining us and we will speak to you later.